أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المنتجبين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم والذين اتخذوا مسجدا ضرارا وكفرا وتفريقا بين المؤمنين وإرصادا لمن حارب الله لمن حارب الله ورسوله من قبل وليحلفن إن أردنا إلا الحسنى والله يشهد إنهم لكاذبون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد A group of منافقين A group of hypocrites in مدينة They asked رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله For permission to build a mosque in حي سليم Which is close to قبا for those of you that have been to the holy city of Medina and you've visited Masjid Quba, Hay Salim is close by in that area. And we all know the significance of Masjid Quba, the first mosque to be built in Islam under Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. These hypocrites, of course, they disguised as mu'mineen. They disguised themselves as believing Muslims. They asked Rasulullah to give them permission to build a masjid in Hay Salim for whom? For the elderly, for the sick, for the disabled, for people to be able to come and pray in this masjid on rainy days if they can't reach Quba because Quba was a bit farther. This masjid would be closer. So it would be more accessible to those who are disabled, to those that can't make it to Masjid Quba. Now, Rasulullah was preparing to go to the Battle of Tabuk. So he gave them an initial acceptance that, yes, go ahead, whatever you'd like to do. And they asked them that when you come back, we'd like you to pray in this masjid. Open our masjid for us to have our grand opening. Rasulullah was preparing to go to the Battle of Tabuk. So he gave them permission to build the masjid, he told them, I'm going to the battle of Tabuk. When I come back, we'll see what happens. When Rasulullah returned back from the battle of Tabuk, as soon as he arrived in Medina, they came and they told him, Ya Rasulullah, you promised us that you will pray in our masjid, you will open our masjid. Before this, upon arriving into Medina, the day that Rasulullah was about to enter in Medina, Jibreel comes to Rasulullah, with the following verse, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ Those who take a mosque to be harmful, those who build a harmful mosque, and to spread kufr, and to, and to spread disunity amongst believers, and to create a sanctuary for the disbelievers. Rasulullah immediately knew that there was something wrong. This masjid was not as it seems. And so Allah exposes the hypocrites. He exposes their true intentions. And this mosque was built in the disguise of a place of worship. But it was a place of espionage. It was a place of disbelief. It was a place to create a rift and disunity amongst the Muslims here Rasulullah was ordered to bring down the mosque and to burn down the mosque and to turn it into a dumpster. Imagine from a mosque that was initially, the idea was to pray in this mosque and worship Allah. Rasulullah was ordered to turn it into a dumpster, to burn it down and to bring it down. Now what was, in order to understand the reason behind this, we have to understand the context of this verse and the following verse.
It is strange to, to hear that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked to burn down and destroy a mosque that was built with the intention of helping the needy, building it for the disabled, building it for those who are ill, those who cannot walk to Masjid Quba. Why would Allah ask Rasulullah to burn down such a mosque? Does that make sense? Well, we have to understand the circumstances of why this masjid was built. There was an, an, a, a man doing the deeds of Jahiliyyah by the name of Abu Amir. Abu Amir was a pagan who converted to Christianity during the days of Jahiliyyah and became a monk. And he was known for his humility, he was known for his zuhd, for his asceticism. And he became, he was in Medina, he became very influential and popular, especially amongst the Khazraj, the tribe of the Khazraj. So this is a man everyone knows, everyone respects, people get their wisdom, get their spirituality from this individual name known as Abu Amr. Abu Amr would actually tell the people of Medina of the advent of Islam. He would give them good news that a final prophet will come out and he will come and live in the city of Medina. So he was telling people of the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi He was telling them about Islam. Finally, when Rasulullah did actually you know, announce his prophecy and his message, and he migrated to Medina, and people came to support Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They gathered around Rasulullah, and they slowly drifted away from Abu Amr. Now this obviously created animosity. This created jealousy and envy. When you are the center of attention, and people look to you for guidance. All of a sudden you have competition, a strong competition. People left him and they went towards Rasulullah. This created animosity in his heart, especially after the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr was a major victory for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and for Muslims. So Abu Amr slowly began to drift apart. And in fact, he decided to leave Medina to leave Islam, who he had, he had initially embraced, and he went to Mecca to try to stir the people of Mecca and Quraysh against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to unite the Arab tribes against Rasulullah. And indeed, he was successful in forming an army against Rasulullah. He participated in the Battle of Uhud. He was one of the commanders of the Battle of Uhud, but from the other side. And he dug a ditch in the battle of Uhud for Rasulullah to fall in. Rasulullah fell in a ditch in the battle of Uhud and he was heavily injured because of Abu Amr. However, things did not go his way and he was still not successful. He decided to leave the Arabian Peninsula and he went to the Roman Empire. He went to the Roman Emperor Heraclius. And he went to him, he said, that I am willing to fight the Muslims. I'm willing to fight this prophet, but I need you to secure me with an army, with a powerful army, to, for me to go back and fight the Muslim nation, to fight this prophet. News reached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah labeled him as a fasiq. He, built, he labeled him as a fasiq. Here, historians, some say that he was never able to meet Heraclius, he was never able to secure a meeting between him and the Roman emperor and he died in that area and he was buried there. Other historians say that no, he did meet Heraclius and Heraclius promised him with a strong army, with a powerful army armed so that he will be able to fight Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Everyone agrees that he ended up dying in the Roman empire. He died over there. While he was in the Roman Empire, he sent a message, secret letters, to his supporters in Medina. The hypocrites, the hidden, closeted, if you will, closeted hypocrites in Medina, that I am coming back with a strong army. Be prepared. I'm coming back. Don't lose spirit. We are going to come back and we will defeat this final messenger, Muhammad. Be prepared. 
And he asked them to form a center, a headquarters, a place for their gathering. Hypocrites did not have a place. They didn't have a place to, to form and gather and, and meet. So he asked them to organize a place, a headquarters. They thought to themselves, how are we going to form a headquarters in the presence of Rasulullah and his companions and an Islamic government? We would be called out. We'd be called out immediately. So the best thing is to form a headquarters in the disguise of a mosque, in the disguise of a masjid. Who would assume that a masjid is a headquarters for munafiqeen, for hypocrites, to work against Islam, and to prepare for a battle against Islam? No one would assume this, especially if it's with the intention of building a mosque for the elderly, for the crippled, for the disabled, for people, for, a, uh, for them to have an easy access to a mosque on rainy days. This is a beautiful intention with a beautiful appearance. appearance. You would never assume that this is the job of hypocrites. They built the mosque and everyone was happy that a new mosque was being built in Medina. And they brought one of the young Sahaba who was good in, rec in recitation of the Holy Quran, Majma' bin Haritha, and they appointed him as the Imam of the Masjid. However, Allah, however much the enemies of Islam work against Islam, Allah exposes them, exposes their true intentions. And at the end of the day, Allah saves this religion. He protects this religion. Allah exposes the hypocrites with the verse, وَالَّذِينَ تَخْذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْصَادٍ لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ Allah exposes them. Allah knew of their intentions, but He did not inform Rasulullah because Rasulullah was going to the battle of Tabuk. Rasulullah was going to fight. Rasulullah needed a clear mind. He did, Allah did not want him to worry about an internal conflict in Medina. And Allah wanted the true nature of the hypocrites to be exposed on their own. Some people, you don't need to expose them. Their true colors are shown on their own. They do an, an ex excellent job of exposing themselves. True hypocrites, they expose themselves. They don't need to be exposed. So Allah waited till the end of the battle of Tabuk when Rasulullah was returning to Medina. He exposed them officially and revealed these verses. Not only that, but Rasulullah was ordered not just not to pray in their mosque, but to go and destroy it, burn it, and turn it into a dumpster. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. وَالَّذِينَ تَخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا They take a harmful mosque. This mosque, it was in the, it has the appearance of a mosque, but it was a, a center of idol worshipping. It was a polytheistic monastery. From the outside, it has a minara, it has a qubba, it looks like a mosque, but in reality, it's a polytheistic monastery because the whole purpose behind it was to cause harm to the Muslim nation, cause harm to the Muslim community of Medina. The justifications for building the mosque were fake. Elders, the disabled, the crippled, the needy, the ill. This was... A setup. It was a trap. The ultimate goal was to destroy Islam and to destroy the Muslim community in Medina. وَكُفْرًا وَالَّذِينَ تَخْذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا The purpose was to go back to the pagan days, to spread paganism, to spread the message of idol worshipping. That was the purpose of this mosque. وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the other job of the mosque was to spread disunity. To cause disunity. If you really wanted unity, there was Masjid Quba. Why come and build a mosque meters away from Masjid Quba? From the real Masjid. Why? The purpose is disunity. So that it will cause fewer people to go to Masjid Quba and more people to come to their mosque. Here, my dear brothers and sisters, that is why ulama. They say, if you have the intention of building a mosque, make sure that there's no other mosque in your vicinity. There's no other mosque in your vicinity. Of course, from this, we're talking about the same school of thought. If you follow a different school of thought, that's, that, you're not causing disunity. You're, you're building a mosque for your school of thought. 
But from the same school of thought, you build two mosques right next to each other. Why? That means you're in competition. That means you have competitive goals. It's like two, a doctor that comes and opens an office next to another doctor. You left the entire city and you come and build an office next to another doctor. Obviously, you're in, in competition. You want to cause disunity. You want to cause a rift. Scholars say that don't build a mosque next to each other. Let there be a distance. Let there be a distance. When you build, when you see in a community that some individuals come and build a mosque right next door another mosque, that means their intention is not sincere. It's not for the sake of Allah. You're not building a place of worship. If you want to build a place of worship, there's a mosque right here. Come and pray in this mosque. Why come and build a mosque right next to it? وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ the purpose was to ca- create behind Masjid Dharar. Masjid Dharar was to create a headquarters, a headquarters for the kuffar and for the mushrikeen. My dear friends, Masjid Dharar, it became a concept. It's not just a physical place, a physical masjid. It became a concept for any mosque that is built to cause disunity, to cause fitna, to cause trouble. To cause a rift in the Muslim community, that masjid is known as Masjid Dharar. It became a concept. And they will swear to you, Ya Rasulullah, that we had sincere intentions. We built this mosque for the needy, for the poor, for the disabled, those who can't come to Masjid Quba. They will swear. They have a good appearance. They have great slogans. But the important thing is to know the, the true intentions. Because sometimes looks, are, are, looks can be deceiving, my dear brothers and sisters. Looks, appearances, slogans can be very deceiving. What is important is to know the true intentions of certain individuals, of certain groups. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Here we can draw several lessons, my dear brothers and sisters, from this verse and the story of Number one, Muslims should not be naive. We should not be deceived by appearances, by empty slogans, by attractive and fake slogans. We must be able to read between the lines. Muslims have to read between the lines. What is this person or this group or this entity or this party's true intentions? We have to be able to read between the lines. Muslims have to be smart and intelligent. We have to be able to distinguish between hypocrites and non-hypocrites. We have to dis- be able to distinguish between the tactics of hypocrites. Because in every time and in every place, there are hypocrites and they use the same tactics all the time. They come with clear intentions, beautiful intentions. We're here to serve you, serve Islam. We're here to serve the elderly and the crippled and the needy. But they have a hidden agenda. We have to be able to Read in between the lines and call them out. Because in every, in every time and in every place there are frauds. There are fake prophets. There are fake mu'mineen. They're fake. There are fake mosques. There are fake scholars. There's frauds. There's fraudsters everywhere that are trying to fool the mu'mineen. Mu'min, the mu'mineen are supposed to call them out. Be able to distinguish who is true and who is false. Who is, you see, there are some people, they can't come and fight Islam publicly. They don't have the means, they don't have the support, but they will come and try to infiltrate us from within our ranks. They will come and try to destroy us from within. They can't declare war on you publicly. They're cowards. They can't. So they will come and they will try to infiltrate us from within. We have to be very careful. Muslims have to be very intelligent, not to be deceived by attractive appearances. We have to have the ability to analyze, think, ponder, not rush. Not rush. Try to discover true intentions. True Muslims do not accept every call that is extended to them, even if it seems legitimate. True Muslims do not shake hands of every hand that is extended to them, even if it seems legitimate we cannot be naive 
A true Muslim does not support every movement that invites him or her to join. They, they do not affiliate every movement with every party. No, Muslims are awake. Or in, in a modern concept, they're woke. Muslims are woke, they're awake. They know who is out to get them and who is out to support them and to truly support them. We have to do our homework. We have to be able to distinguish between angels and demons, between the, sheeps, the sheep and the wolves. We learn from this story that we can be infiltrated. They will come and get us with the disguise of a mosque. Husayniya. With, with beautiful intentions, with a beautiful appearance, but they're actually trying to destroy us. This is something we have to pay attention to. Pay attention to people's true intentions. Look out for Freudian slips, because those who hide true intentions in their hearts, they will slip. Once in a while they will slip. They will say a word here, they wor a word there, it will slip out of them. We have to be cautious and catch on to those signs that sometimes we are blind to. This doesn't mean that we become suspicious of everyone. At the same time, it doesn't mean that we are suspicious of everyone. In some communities, we are suspicious of every convert. Why is this person converting to Islam? Why is this person accepting Islam with the school of thought of Ahl Bayt? Or we are suspicious of every journalist. No, this is incorrect as well. The idea is not to be suspicious of everyone and develop and believe in and all conspiracy, conspiracy theories, but at the same time, we shouldn't be naive. We shouldn't believe in everyone at the same time. Why was Rasulullah ordered to burn down this mosque? It's a mosque at the end of the day. It's a mosque. We know that mosques in Islam are sacred. If there's rocks, previously there were no rugs. Mosques were furnished with sand and rocks. Ulama tell us that you cannot take out rocks from a mosque and take them outside. If you ever took out a rock from a mosque, you have to put it back in. If a masjid becomes najis, you have to rush. You have to rush to purify it and to clean it. This is the sanctity of a mosque. Yet Allah orders Rasulullah to burn down this mosque and bring it down. And not just that, but to turn it into a dumpster, mezbala. To turn it into a dumpster, a place where the community throws their trash. Why? Why? Because this mosque has a beautiful appearance, but in reality, it's not a mosque. It's not a mosque. It's a polytheistic monastery. It's not a place to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's a place to worship Shaitan. It, there's nothing sacred about it. It's a place of division. It was not a house of God. It was a house of shaitan. Names don't matter. Calling it a masjid doesn't matter. It's the true intentions. It's what this mosque represents. What it stands for. What it is doing to the community. That is what it is. This is masjid dura. This is number one. Number two, any masjid that causes disunity in the Muslim community is masjid dura. Masjid Dharar is not just a historical story of an incident that occurred 14 centuries ago in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa No, Masjid Dharar is any mosque in the community. When there's a rift in the community, when ego comes in the way, when someone is not able to run the mosque in his way or her way, they cause a rift in the community and they'll say, we will build our own mosque. Is this mosque truly being built for the sake of Allah or to fulfill your ego? To fulfill your agenda because you were not able to lead the other mosque. You did not receive the presidency of the board. Your agenda did not go through. You, you want to build this mosque. Your mosque is a masjid dharar. It's causing a disunity in the community. The point of a mosque is to cause unity. It's to create unity. This is one of the beautiful things about our mosques is that it gets us together, it gets our youth together, our family members together not to cause disunity and division. The unity of Muslims is above all else. Even if you're building a mosque for the sake of Allah, but the unity of Muslims is above all else. Number three, we learn a lesson from the story of Masjid al that whenever 
you destroy, you have to have a replacement. You cannot destroy without providing a replacement. And here Allah provides a replacement. وَالَّذِينَ تَقْذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضَرَارًا And then in the, in, in the second verse, لَمَسْجِدٌ أُسِّسَ عَلَى التَّقْوَى مِنْ أَوَّلِ يَوْمٍ أَحَقُّ أَنْ تَقُومَ فِي There's a replacement. Masjid Quba. You don't have to go to this harmful masjid. There's Masjid Quba that was built upon piety. From the first day, there's a replacement. You see, my dear friends, this is a lesson for us all. Whenever we teach our children not to do something, teach them to do something else. You have to provide a replacement. Even as a scholar, as a speaker, as community leaders, whenever we negate, we have to provide. Even the shahada, you see, لا إله إلا الله. I negate other gods, but I prove that there's a God. You cannot negate and stop. You can't say لا إله and stop. لا إله إلا الله. Whenever you destroy, you have to build. You tell youth not to go to clubs, not to go to harmful places, there's a mosque. There's a community center. There's youth sessions. There's, sport, there's sports. There's sport events. Provide an outlet. You tell people, don't listen to this speaker. But provide them another speaker. Provide them with another outlet. Provide them with a replacement. Don't go to this place, but go to this place. Don't believe in this theory, but there's another theory. You have to have a replacement. Don't be the type of person that only destroys and negates and tells people not to do something without having a replacement. You always have to have a replacement. Don't listen to music. But we have an ashi that you may listen to. Always have a replacement because destroying is not enough. The fourth lesson, my dear brothers and sisters, and I conclude with this, is that a useful center, a masjid that is truly for the sake of Allah has to have two components. You see, لَمَسْجِدٌ أُسِّسَ عَلَى التَّقْوَى مِنْ أَوَّلِ يوم. A mosque has to be built upon piety and righteousness and sincere intentions from the first day. From the first day. Now, wallah, I want to build a masjid because I want to prove that other masjid wrong. They disgraced me, they embarrassed me, they didn't allow me to have my programs, my events. I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to have my masjid. This is, this is not a true intention. Believe me, this sort of masjid will fail. It will become masjid dharar. La masjidun usisa ala taqwa min awwal yawm. It was built upon piety, righteousness, sincere intentions from day one, from the start. From the day of putting the first rock, from, from, from the first brick, it was built upon sincere intentions. This is one. Ahaqwa an taqwa fih. And then, fihi rijalun yuhubboon an yatatahharu. This mosque has men and women, of course. The, the, the verse doesn't, uh, isn't, uh, you know, isn't just talking about men. When it says rajal, men and women that like to be purified. They come to this mosque for the sake of purification, for the sake of learning, for the sake of growing spiritually, not for the sake of disunity, not for the sake of fitna, not for the sake of causing a rift and the Muslim community. If any masjid has these two components, it is built upon piety from the first day and true intentions, and it has believing men and women who come to seek knowledge, to, to come and grow spiritually and to seek purification, this mosque is the, is the place to go to. This masjid is a good masjid to go to. It is not a harmful masjid. A masjid for, should be built for the sake of Allah and only, not for the sake of individuals, not for the honor and for the ego of certain individuals. I, I want to build a mosque for myself. I want people to say this is my mosque and it's for my friends and for my people. I conclude with the story of Buhlul. You all know Buhlul. Buhlul came across a mosque built by a certain individual. A certain individual built a mosque. So Buhlul came and asked him, he told him, you built this mosque for whom? He said, for Allah. He said, are you sure? He said, yes, absolutely. Are you sure this mosque, you built it for the sake of Allah? He said, yes, absolutely. He said, if it's for Allah, then I'm sure you don't mind if I put my name on it. 
Let's write Masjid Buhlul. He said, your name? Why your name? I will write my name. He said, you just told me the Masjid is for Allah. If it's for Allah, then you won't care whose name is on the Masjid. Whether it's Masjid Buhlul or it's Masjid someone else. You were just telling me it's for Allah. Why, wouldn't you, why would you want your name on it and not my name? A masjid for, should be for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma an yasaluka. An taj'ala fi ma taqdi wa tuqaddir min al-amr al-mahtum fi al-amr al-hakim min al-qadai al-lazhi la yurad wa la yubaddal. أن تكتبنا من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المخفور ذنوبهم المكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وعافية وتوسع في رزقي وتجعلني ممن تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل بغيري أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يطلع الفجر من ليلتي هذه ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه ولأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والعلماء والشهداء نقرأ سورة الفاتحة مع الصلوات